ہیلو السلام علیکم گڈ مارننگ خوش آمدی جی آیا نو خوئی مورخ بخیر اگلے نی ہا چور شمے وش بولے ہائے گنزائی مس گوٹن مورگن اولا بو یور پریویئر کیفا حال حال شما چتورے اہل وسال مرحبا بونا بوچو گراسیا سواویکا پین ویری امیزنگ گڈ مارننگ ٹو ایوری باڈی ہوز ٹیون ان ٹو پی ٹی وی ورلڈ اینڈ ار واچنگ ورلڈ دس مارننگ الانگ سائیڈ دی ویری فینٹاسٹک شیزا ہاشمی اینڈ شہزاد خان ہیلو شیزا How are you doing today? Thank you so much for asking. I'm doing absolutely great. What about you? Well, I think I'm feeling great too as well. But uh, other than that, ladies and gentlemen, obviously there's always a thought. And my heart goes out to all of those people who are actually fighting against COVID-19 as well. And not just those people who are actually suffering from that, but their family members as well. And we hope and pray that you're looking after yourselves in these times of distress as well. Please make sure to look after your loved ones and please make sure that you do not put your loved ones into risk by going out and meeting other people. Exactly, and Shazad, I think you did wrap up quite well this sentence as well. When you say you have to take care of your m- family members and your friends and everything, yep. and that starts by literally staying at home. So <laughs> please do that. I mean, we do see a lot of sorts of memes mm. going around on internet as well, how people are sick of staying at home because it's so boring and whatnot. Yeah. There's one job that you have to do, and that is literally just, you know, do everything from the expense of your own bed, from your, the expense of your own sofa and your TV lounge. I mean, That's all we require of you, so I really hope you all are complying to it as exactly. well. Exactly, that's great. Thank you very much, Shiza, for saying that as well. And ladies and gentlemen, I think that life has actually taught all of us a new lesson. And mm. that lesson is that for all of those people who actually always wanted to go to restaurants, I mean, it's fine. Everybody should go to a restaurant. Mm-hmm. And it's perfectly all right as well. But I think that life has taught us that, you know, wearing all of those brands, going to all of these restaurants, going to some expensive five-star hotels, or going to for a vacation, is not that important when your life is in danger. And I think everybody needs to realize that as well. But not yeah. just that, ladies and gentlemen, I think there's always an element of hope. And yeah, for people absolutely. to be hopeful is something which will actually show us the silver lining in the sky. Hope is a beautiful yeah. thing, Shazad, you know, because, of course, pandemics have been there throughout yeah. the, well, I'm going to say I mean, almost in every century. Yeah, yeah, yeah. People have been facing such things. But hope mm-hmm. is such a beautiful thing because when you cling on to it, it is going to get you out of situations that you never even imagined you could manage. Exactly. And this is what I'm sort of looking forward to. You know, Shazad and I don't mean to sort of, you know, create a hysteria or create panic, especially early in the morning for all of you guys. But we love to share information and the latest stats with you. But also... You know, we love to keep uh, recognizing the fact that we need to be hopeful of the yeah. future as well. Speaking of hope in the current situation, Shazad, it's, uh, I mean, it's hopeful for the people of Italy and Spain as well, because yeah. for the previous three days, there's been a decline in the mortality rate, uh, yeah. which is, well, fingers crossed, very good to look at, considering what has been going on there for so exactly. long. Exactly. Thank you very much for saying that. But ladies and gentlemen, this is not how it looks for Pakistan as well. The new number of cases is coming and it's increasing as well. So I think we really need to be more careful. I've heard people saying, oh, you know, there, there are no more cases in Islamabad or there are no more cases in our city as well. So you will never know. Exactly. Because just to see this microbe, ladies and gentlemen, you'll actually have to zoom in 80,000 times to see what it looks like. Imagine. So please make sure to be safe. And then there's this other campaign which is going on on social media as well. And I think that it is having an impact on people where people are actually telling people to stay away from positive people. <laughs> I mean, so imagine that we are in a time when we are being told to stay away from positive mindsets. It's not that. I think that people have taken it uh, totally wrong. And it's all because of the fact that, you know, for all of those people who are very positive in their energy or within the life or within the kind of work they do, they can actually be very harmful for you. And it's because of the fact that they might not take this pandemic seriously, go out or probably even chill with you or have a barbecue with you and still can infect you. Now, just to let you know, ladies and gentlemen, with every disease, there's this R-rated thing, which means R0 means that you are not going to give this disease, particular disease to anybody else. With influenza, it's R2. So you are more likely to give it to two more people, but with coronavirus, it's R6. So you can pretty much imagine that how deadly it can be and you can be spreading it to your loved ones, parents or anybody around you if you have been with that positive person who told you nothing's going to happen. See, I told you. Yeah. So please don't take that risk. But then at the end of the day, you have to be positive by being at home. You, uh, I think that it's about time that everybody needs to pray. I'm very happy that for the last 20 days, I've been praying five times a day. Oh, mashallah. And that I've been uh, asking for Allah's mercy as well. And, but not just that. I think that it has, it has helped me evolve as a Muslim, not just a person. Everybody is evolved as a person, but everybody needs to evolve as a Muslim. Yeah. Faith restored, I think. These are the things which people need to do. Exactly. That's beautiful, Shazad. Yep. Thank you so much for sharing that information with me too, because I didn't know about the R6 thing, to yeah. be honest. And, you know, speaking of faith, yes, it does strengthen, you know, especially in hard times. But since there are, you know, a lot of hard times going on for a lot of people out there <laughs> yeah. as well, 
For children specifically, I feel like it's very apt to say that our leader, our establishment did realize that, well, education cannot be put to a halt, right? Exactly. There is no way that we can actually take months off from school. Initially, well, there was a lockdown for almost two weeks or something, but then people from within the schools, colleges, universities, even the students themselves, the parents realized that there has to be an alternative for, you know, to yeah. sort of come up with another idea of dis uh, dispersing education to exactly. everyone in need. May they be adults or students but before we get to what we are talking about I want to take this moment to be really proud of PTV Shazad because we know a new channel is launching especially for this teleeducation thingy exactly. and for it's, it's going to actually offer contents for everyone who's watching exactly and that's great and I hope that everybody's going to learn from it too as well but not just PTV ladies and gentlemen as I always say that it's always a public private partnership mm -hmm. as well so there are a lot of other people who jumped into it to make sure that the that not just the youth or not just the elderly are being looked after, that yeah. for all of those kids who are going to be the future, who are the beacon for us, ladies and gentlemen, that they are getting well prepared, that they are getting that due education which they Absolutely. require in this time as well. Because I know for sure that mothers are going crazy. My daughter, you know, <laughs> she used to go to school. She's not going to school these days. And yeah, so you, last night I was actually working with her uh, on an Urdu book and she almost forgot how to read Urdu as well, which oh. was a little difficult for me <laughs> to make her understand uh, uh, you know, Thor or George, oh. you know, all of that. So, so I and I think that it is every parent's responsibility to be uh, involved, to be 100% yeah, involved course. in their kids' education. I think that this is that time as well where I've realized how important was it for me to sit down with my kids and with their books as well and make them understand. And I think that it's important. But not just that, ladies and gentlemen. Today, I think that this is uh, this will be a milestone hmm. because I don't think that any other channel. I'm sorry that I'm doing this as well, but I'm once again a Pakistani again. That no. Everybody has actually highlighted what uh, the private schools have done in these times as well and I obviously Roots Millennium taking the lead because of the fact that the kind of application they came up with was very handy and it was very understandable and just when I was trying to prepare for this show as well I just you know went on to the application because it was in, it? yeah it was on my wife's phone oh yeah and yeah I was like okay you know tell me what to do and then we can even contact the teachers we get our homework you know we get our schedule Perfect. so everything's on it and uh, I think that it is not even a problem for the for mothers and it's because of the fact that we everybody is using a smartphone these days yeah. and everybody knows how to use applications but yes there was a question mark and there was a question mark that you know not all parents are educated not all parents hail from the backgrounds we are from as well so what do they do in these times as well how do they understand it but ladies and gentlemen will definitely hear it from the horse's mouth as well because uh, we have those pioneers over here who have made sure that they are going to leave nothing unturned so that their students can actually learn and learn the best as well ladies and gentlemen we're very lucky that we've been joined by somebody who's been awarded Tamgai Amtiaz as well for his Amazing. services. Ladies and gentlemen, he's the CEO of the Millennium Education. He's none other than Mr. Faisal Mushtaq, a very household name. Hello, Assalamu Alaikum. Good morning. Wa Alaikum Assalam and thank you and a good morning to you both. Thank you thank very you much so for much. joining us. It's always wonderful to have you. But ladies and gentlemen, the, the only, well not the only thing, but I think that uh, this is something which I look forward to. Listening to Faisal Mushtaq is something which will actually make you fall or take inspiration from him. That's that's oh, how that's he is great. and I think that's how one needs to be as well. But not just that, hmm. ladies and gentlemen, he's got a fabulous team and this lady I've always <coughs> been in conversation with. We've been shooting at their schools too as well. We've done some a lot of crazy stuff as well, just for the kids too. But ladies and gentlemen, she's actually the director of community and outreach. She's none other than Miss Sabina. Zakir, hello, assalamu alaikum, good morning. Thank you very much and a very good morning to you and thank you for having me again. Welcome thank you very much show. for joining us, it's wonderful to have you. And ladies and gentlemen, we obviously want to know how parents feel hmm. about this application, downloading it and then looking for the kids' homework and then getting <laughs> it done. We have a mother as well with us, ladies and gentlemen, she's none other than Miss Uzma Hayat. Hello, assalamu alaikum, how are you? Assalamu alaikum, thank you so much for having us here on this show. Uh, I feel privileged. Uh, to be able to speak on behalf of the parental community on this platform. So let's Don't see worry, how it goes. Don't worry, you're not the only one. I'm here with you too as well. <laughs> so thank you very much for joining us. Thank let's get you started. So, much. <coughs> so Mr. Faisal Mushtaq, you know, this was very early that you've actually initiated a process where we could teach our kids online or, uh, you know, for that matter, e-education. How did it all happen in such a short <coughs> span of time? Most importantly, I would like to thank both of you for hosting this important subject and the discussion today Thank you very much. because no other television channel has taken exactly. stock of it and they are into the other uh, engagements. Mm -hmm. Firstly and most importantly for the audience in Pakistan to know 
<clears throat> this is the biggest closure of schools, educational institutions in the world after the Second World War. Exactly. Oh, wow. It has never happened. This is unprecedented. Yep. Secondly, we also need to understand we need to revisit the term called social contract. Yep. Absolutely. The best classroom in the world is called the family in a society. All right. mm. Now, many people say, what has happened to our classrooms? And I say, let's revisit the social contract. Family is the classroom. Yep. Mm -hmm. Now, what I need to say is that physics is in toys. Yep. Chemistry is in the kitchen. Absolutely. Yeah. Biology is in the garden. Mm. Artificial intelligence is in your computers. True. And arts is in the coloring books. Mm -hmm. Now, you make me understand that what are the three components of education? It is the knowledge, skills, and value. Yeah. I understand holistically within the country, without online education, knowledge may be compromised, but mm. not skills and values. Yeah. Mm. And when we talk about character building and values education, the whole country talks about taaleem and tarbiyat. Yeah. So the very edifice of character is based on values. And where do they come from? To this institution called family. Yeah. My message Absolutely. to parents is that at this time, our children, they need empathy more than exams. Right. They need compassion more than yeah. comparison. Yeah. Mm. They need your presence more than the presence. Yeah. It's time to rethink the way we look after our children. May this is a great opportunity that the planet Earth is closed for repairs. And here, we should not panic and worry and load our children with testing. Exactly. Let them rest. It's time to reach out to their heads and their hearts. Now, Absolutely. coming to your original question, what do you do with online education? Now, how did you do? How did you do it all of a sudden? You know, so no, we were in a lockdown. We everybody did not was do it all of a sudden. Shahzad yeah. and Shiza. Five years ago, I started with this vision, okay. uh -huh. and the, and the background was that is school an extension of home? Or is home an extension of school? school. Yeah. Now, mm -hmm. that's a question no one answered for me. Yeah. So I envisioned that going forward, we need a digital platform. We need a learning portal Absolutely. in which the parents, teachers, and the children, they can be engaged in real time. Hmm. So I started working with a Silicon Valley company, oh, wow. and we set up this project office and vision. We have spent more than a million US dollars on developing this application, wow. and it took about two years with testing. Now, what it is that it's an app which is available to Android and iOS users, yep. mm -hmm. and then also it's a web-enabled portal. Oh. So now what students and the teachers, they upload the worksheets, the assignments, the uh, collaborative work. The mothers and parents, they are facilitators. They are chaperoning. Yep. I must give credit to a lot of urban Pakistani parents. They are giving a lot of quality time. Yep. There may be certain limitations. Some parents say, oh, we need a printer. No, you do not need a printer. Mm -hmm. We intentionally want you to facilitate some sort of work in the copies if they are there, or the students can load back their assignment, and then we provide feedback. So the teachers are in direct communication with the parents in real time. Wow. Then wow. there is e-progress cards. Their, their calendar, their daily communication, their assignments, their activity sheets, their timetable, their study schedule, study guidelines, syllabus, lesson plan. Little did we know that we will be subject to this pandemic. Exactly. And that is how this learning management system called Matrix went into action. 13,000 parents as we speak mm. are working on it on daily basis. Wow. Now we do also get some problems, the backend server at the right. comp sets that went down, you know, because the problems exactly. associated with internet. Okay. My final message is virtual or virus. You know, the, we really need to understand that it's both an opportunity within the adversity. Well, that's great, and thank you very much for taking this initiative. And I think as parents, we're very confident that, you know, that our kid is actually not missing out on anything as well. Absolutely. But just one simple thing, because, uh, you know, we just cannot be that serious. I know that that's how the situation is globally. But we need to ask you, why the name Matrix, though? Well, it just basically we wanted to brand it with our education. Group. All it reminds me about is can you read? Uh, yeah, no, no, it's it's it's, <laughs> not, it's got nothing to do with the movie. It's yeah. called the Millennium Academic uh, uh, Technology, oh. uh, uh, then Real Time right. Information Exchange. Wow. Okay. So that's what it stands for: Millennium Academic Technology Real Time Information Exchange. Wow. So it's just the way that we wanted to brand it. Also, children they're very digi and they're very brand frenzy. Yep. So if they get hold of a name, something like Matrix, True. they own it. Yeah, it's yeah, all yeah. about how you package the communication. Wow. Right. If you look at it, 
forget about matrix google classroom shahzad and shaza it's hmm. a free tool yeah but Absolutely. a lot many people they don't think that it's free anyone can access it microsoft teams is also another tool exactly. hmm. zoom is also another tool yep. but i also must remind your audience through this show sure. a lot of people think that email and whatsapp and facebook is online education that ain't <laughs> online education thank you very much for saying that and since i know that you have a question but why so yeah but very quickly i need to tell yeah, everybody yeah. one thing and i'm very happy about it that you know in a lot of shows i've said that you know back in 1850 when we used to see a car you know it will be probably 60 horsepower 50 horsepower you know and uh, probably wooden wheels or something of that sort as well but uh, in 1850 the classroom actually still had to uh, had a blackboard and all of that you know from which we went through as well yeah. but now eventually there was a time when i started saying that you know the cars have actually converted into being all electric and no engines at all but the classroom is still filled with blackboards and that's what it is yeah. i think that today is the day which makes me happy that finally our education institutions have taken up on this responsibility and are actually in line with the most educated systems available on the internet these days it is a gentleman and that's a hat off to you absolutely mr fessel everything you said is absolutely brilliant i do want to dig in deeper to you know all the aspects of the of the key factors sort of you know that are running the matrix uh, yeah. matrix app itself one thing you said i absolutely admire that the planet is off for you know sort of uh, renovation when you say <laughs> what did you say <laughs> what were the exact yeah. words repairs yeah. yes <laughs> which is true so let's just give time to that but moving on to you mr sabina speaking of the matrix app um we know a bit of the details of it but when you guys launched it how were the parents receiving it were there some elements let's say who were not willing to be that participating in the whole process as well because when i remember shahzad i don't know if you remember having a summer homework as well yep. summer vacation Never homework did right yeah <laughs> i mean more <laughs> okay so yeah. the, the only thing that i remember after so many years of education is the time that my parents spent with me making those clay dinosaurs Ooh. or making making photo frames or even writing you know essays and everything so you very rightly said family and classroom are sort of you know uh they change places they're sort of a cycle interconnected and that is how we learn as well so how did the parents receive it well um to begin with thank you very much for having me and uh, i endorse the idea that uh, shizad said that basically uh it is a revisiting of the entire social network right and so when you revisit mm -hmm. so i'm from a generation which is which was a little different yeah. and uh, all the young people around me uh, they give me energy and now they give me a thought where i think yes some of the things uh, that were done in my times were not all that bad either mm. which was uh, so everything doesn't need to be reinvented is what i really wanted to say all right. and so i feel that the basic wheel is r going back to basics also yeah. uh -huh. yes we are communicating oh. yes our communication is uh, different um uh, at our institution now that we are communicating in a different manner um because we started off early and thanks to the vision uh, we started off early so the, there was certain communication that was already going on with the parents right so there are many many ways that we were communicating and it's been taken very well yeah. number one yes there are difficulties nobody is going to shy away from them mm -hmm. and i think uh, the beauty to anything is that it evolves yep. so everything evolves right. this thing is also evolving Right. I think we have a very positive I would say a mm. very positive response because uh, the audience we are dealing with understand the usage and when we were sort of criticizing that there's too much of technology and this um, uh, telecommunication um, you know uh, really boomed in our country mm -hmm. I now see the advantage of it as well Absolutely. so everybody Absolutely. has this telephone and everybody uh sort of even the children so uh, there was a time when uh, you know our blackboards or whiteboards were saying that it's a sunny day today mm. and um, now if you ask a student uh, what it is so i would say shahzad's children would say it's partly sunny and partly cloudy because <laughs> they they really touched that um, app <laughs> that you have in your phone uh, from your dad or your mom yeah. so they are far ahead also Absolutely. so if uh, the parent they uh, feels a little um, uh, insecure hmm. their children are not yeah yeah they are in our hmm. institute they are uh, already addressed they understand you talk to a child he'll answer the thing in a different way you right. talk to a mother and uh, a little bit of anxiety that she might be facing because um, our dads 
um, are visiting, are revisiting the role as well. Yep. Like uh, Badi Hasi, uh, you know, it, it yeah, gives yeah. me, uh, a, you nice know, uh, sometimes a smile. <laughs> uh, and it says, okay, so if you're talking to a father, he would say, um, uh, Abdullah, which class are you in? And so he has to ask the child. <laughs> <laughs> the mother knows it. Yeah. So, so this happened yes, to me twice as well. Yes, it does. You were being honest here. Yeah. So, so yes, there is a revisit. Mm. Yeah. So communication at all levels is improving, ma'am. Right. Absolutely. I would like to say. No, but that's but, but I'm sorry that I'm interjecting, but there's a problem over okay. here. So, ladies and gentlemen, when we used to go to school, you know, we used to have sections like A, B, or C. Yeah. Now, imagine that you're stepping into a school where it's like Zurich, <laughs> Sweden. I mean, how, how would you remember which country or which city my, my daughter's going to? I think that gets a little difficult, but for mothers, because it's a daily thing, yeah. they can get through with it no, as no, well. No, no, I'm not trying to really. But I'm just trying to say this is how it happens. Yeah, but I felt in, it that way. In, invariably, with every parent, mm -hmm. well, the way we communicate is, we're always available for our parent. It's an open door. It was an open door policy, and now it's an open communication policy. Right. So we have whole uh, teams uh, who address this from the school side, from the corporate side, mm -hmm. and we are apt. I think um, I wouldn't say um, I wouldn't say that uh, we've reached there because there's always innovation. There's always learning. I Absolutely. would say we are doing a pretty good job. And allow me to say, please, sure. that when we say that there are doctors and there are uh, martial art army men we are so proud of yeah. they're fighting i feel that there there's always one segment that my society sort of neglects so maybe uh, doesn't focus too much on mm -hmm. other teachers okay. other teachers are playing a very vital role please remember to respect that Absolutely. and while they're undergoing most of our uh, women are urban like your good self Right. And they are working like your good self. You're right. here in the morning doing something, and you have a family that's going to be uh, okay. uh, needing your uh, uh, time as well. So when I say that, I feel that the teachers need to be respected. Of course. And, and I would like to pay, take this opportunity to salute that badge hmm. that is doing their job in these testing times. Exactly. So Sabina, there's no <coughs> denying that, of course, teachers have that status that need to be respected. But now going back to, you know, the collaborative effort between families and the school itself, yeah. um, I feel like because I have siblings as well, and I myself went okay. through a very progressive, well, say, stage of um, learning from my nursery to, you know, all my university years as well, I yeah. feel like I did see all those phases of yeah. Blackboard I mean, and then LMS and whatnot. Going to university, yeah, I'm still yeah. learning, to be yeah. honest. <laughs> so the thing is, Ms. Osma, you being a parent, I want to know because there were times when there was only this one uh, one day in, a, in an entire year parent teachers meeting that is the only time you were going to see the teachers and ask about the progress or the report of your child which sometimes would be you know sort of misunderstood or misunderstood as well because of all the you know attention that the teacher needs to give to 40 or even more people but now you have hands-on access to the kind of information that just you know child the results that he's producing in your phone how are you taking this process um, well, uh, first of all, I would like to say that it wasn't easy for the parents to take it. But yes, we as parents need to understand our responsibilities as well, mm -hmm. that um, we um, have to look at it as uh, something that is evolving. Right. In fact, um, something that has happened and uh, it's there for our facilitation. Right. And um, um, yes, uh, when we had this app, we um, were told that we need to it was communicated through SMS and uh, through notices as well that we need to um, get this uh, app downloaded. Right. So we all started um, on this um, as parents that we wanted to have this downloaded on our phone. Why? Because we wanted to be in touch with the school right. and stay connected um, and to know what was happening in the classrooms basically with our students being there from mm -hmm. 8 a.m. till 2.30 we wanted to know what uh, class work they were doing and um, um, and uh, what assignments they were given mm -hmm. and what uh, the diary would be so that when we come back at um, in the evening and sit with them uh, we would know that uh, what they did throughout the day right. because um, to be honest the kids these days I mean if you turn around and say okay so how was your day okay yeah what did you do <laughs> nothing <laughs> so it was very important for us to have that connection with the school right, right. and calling uh, we would come back at about 5 30 or 6 o'clock and it wasn't easy 
Yeah. So, um, yes, um, um, it's the best connection mm -hmm. that uh, we have um, and uh, we feel proud of it. Thank That's you very much for saying that. Group. And ladies and gentlemen, I don't know, I think I've, even I've observed this thing as well, that in the newer generations, they are very brief in their responses. <laughs> hey, how was your day today? Okay. You know, so that's yeah. it. They do not say anything <laughs> beyond that, but that's fine. But now, as a mother, what I would love to ask you over here is that I know that even for mothers, it's very difficult these days. Earlier, you know, you, since you're a mother of three kids, yes. and all, are all of them going to school? Yes, they are. All right, oh, so wow. see, see, that's fabulous. So imagine that three kids going to different classes and yeah. being attended by different teachers is a yeah. very different story. Yeah. But for a single mother or for a mother, just like that, you know, teaching three kids on the same application at the same time, don't you think gets a little difficult? No, actually, wow. that's the beauty <laughs> of this application. Yeah. That in just a click away, you can switch the profile of every child. Yeah. So there would be a profile of your kids. Um, like my uh, son is called Heather, Moise and Iman is my daughter. So what I would do is that click on uh, Heather yeah. and then switch profile and click on Moise. So I would know what Heather has done all day all right. and uh, what numbers he got in his assignments uh -huh. as well. Yeah. So there's um, no hiding so anymore. So yeah, there isn't. <laughs> I mean, the kids would come back and say that, um, oh, we had a test. How was it? It was okay. Mm -hmm. So the, I mean, it's just a click away. Wow, oh, wow, that's yeah. brilliant. But you know, Shazad, I feel like we are getting the parents' perspective and that is great to actually yeah. see that you guys are, you know, up for the change as well. But I want to learn how the teachers are actually taking this app as well. Are they really willing to, you know, be available and be there for help of extra hours as well? Are yeah. they really willing to make the extra worksheets and, you know, sort of engage the students even when the schools are closed? This is what we will be talking about to the CEO of the Millennium Education yeah. System himself right after this very short break. Shazad, you have something to say? Exactly. Just adding on to what Shazad said, ladies and gentlemen, because at this point of time when we see that everybody is going or moving towards newer solutions, I think that it is going to have an impact on human resource. And obviously, you know, they might have to lessen or probably send a few teachers back home as well, just because of the fact that the burden is not too much. Yeah. But how does it or how do you think that the parents are going to probably reply to that? That needs to be a hard one. But yes, that's how it is. Good morning. We'll be back. Basic education is the right of every child. Today, some 168 million children are in child labor, deprived of education. Every child, without discrimination, deserves access to a quality education. Basic education is the right of every child. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. For everybody who just got tuned into PTV, while you watching World This Morning, and I'm Sachiza Hashmi and Shahzad Khan. 
Today, ladies and gentlemen, we've actually been joined by the pioneers of e-learning as well, who made sure that every kid who's at home and not attending school is actually learning something new every single day. Absolutely. And before the break, we were speaking about, you know, we, we actually have a lot of perspectives on the show here today. And we sort of explored and discovered the perspective where parents are actually enjoying and learning the journey of yeah. this e-learning too. Uh, you know, on just the expense of their mobile phones as well on this matrix app. By the That's millennium not energy. the only expense though, but yeah. <laughs> okay, well, there's a web portal as well. But, well, now we want to talk about the teacher's side. Mr. Yeah. Fessel, there must be, of course, you have an amazing staff. You have an amazing, a large number of faculty members as well. But m two parts of this question. First of all, how are they sort of taking this? Are they ready to be available every time or whenever they're supposed to be? Are they ready to put up the extra hours to help and, you know, create new content to engage the students? And number two, because, of course, I do realize among this pandemic, a lot of companies do have to, unfortunately, unfortunately, let go up for a lot of their employees. Are you doing that, too? <coughs> so let me answer. Let me give a clear perspective. Yeah, because, please. you see, the problem as a young Pakistani that I faced is that mm -hmm. we lack clarity. Okay. Parents, our parents, they were digital immigrants. Yeah. My mom and dad, they had immigration into technology. Okay. Teachers and young learners today, they are digital natives. Mm. They are born into technology. Uh, the other generation, they had immigration into technology. Yeah. That's why they're called millennials. Second question, that will technology replace the teacher? Mm. This debate and discussion has been going on <coughs> for the last 100 years. Yes. The conclusion is, I work across the communities around the world. The conclusion is, te teacher should not be replaced by mm -hmm. technology. Only the teachers, those who do not use technology as the tool to facilitate, yeah. shall be replaced by the ones, those who do use technology. Right. Brilliant. Now, when you come about the teaching fraternity, we both have a challenge and an opportunity. Hmm. Some teachers are teachers by design. Some are teachers by default. Right. Some are teachers by choice. Some are teachers by chance. Yeah. Our fraternity across the urban centers in Pakistan, and we've got semi-urban centers as well, They've responded, most of them have responded very well, okay. and some, of course, they struggle yeah. as well. So sort of some, for example, a language teacher, Urdu language teacher, mm -hmm. who's been least interested. So the concept has been traditionally in the schools, okay, this has got something to do with computer studies teacher. Okay. This is the computer class, <coughs> this is the IT class. ICT is now a cross-cutting subject. Right. Pakistan and our fraternities, we need to understand that information communication technology is not a standalone subject. You need those information communication technology skills for English language, Absolutely. for Urdu, for science, for Islamiyat, for history, Pakistan studies. For yeah. generally moving on. Absolutely. Yeah. Some people may say, why do we need to have ICT skills for Pakistan studies? Right. That is why on the Google map you get the maps wrong when we talk about the uh, 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 Pakistani Kashmir. Yeah. You know, these are these sensitive issues. Absolutely. Education is the fundamental edifice on which the whole, uh, uh, you know, what do you call it, the, 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 the moral and the social contract right. as being a citizen is based. I always say in my lectures around the world mm -hmm. that 220 million Pakistanis living in Pakistan are not citizens, they are subjects. Education and literacy is the single common denominator which transforms subjects into citizenry. Wow. That's brilliant. Now talking about um, how are we dealing with the people, we are a huge national network, the yes. third largest teaching and learning education group. Education is my passion. A lot of people, recently, three years ago, there was this debate, and a lot right. of people called us as a business business. Oh, well, we are proud to be sustainable. Anything which does create profit is sustainable. Yeah. But I proudly say that we profit the society. Hmm. And so passion, innovation, and creativity, these are the common denominators which drive our company. All right. And so within our company, we have German language education, we have mm -hmm. Chinese language. I'm the largest Chinese language teaching school of Asia. Brilliant. I'm the yeah. Microsoft first mentor school of the country. So doing so, we have robotics education, STEM education, we have singing teachers, music teacher, we have language teachers, speech. So now when you talk about sustainability, yeah. All of a sudden, in with the pandemic, the entire sustainable sustainability model is under question. Yeah. So yes. we are struggling. Yeah. So far, you know, we are managing how we have to. But going forward, if you talk about so much of innovation, so much of creativity, because I have been a prisoner of my own conscious. 
I wanted to give my Pakistani students the best of the world. Hmm. So my philosophy was, if you can't go to the world, I bring the world to you. Wow. 32 years of legacy and history this institution has. Yes. It was founded originally by my mom. I'm the next generation. Hmm. Trust me, our alumni has gone to Harvard, Princeton, Yale, we MIT, know, Dartmouth, yes. Columbia. You ask the international communities, <clears throat> schools and employers, and the development agencies and even civil and armed forces, mm. how they have contributed. Yes. Yes. So we are not just a private sector school, we are a social change making organization. And I really do not like the fact that when society treats us just as a private enterprise or a business, right. we must celebrate our Pakistani success Absolutely. stories and heroes across all industries, I across all that. services. Yeah. So my message is a doctor is the doctor, yeah. Yeah. whether in the public sector at PIMS or whether in the private sector at Kalsum or Qaeda Azam of Hospital. Course. And a teacher is the teacher and so is a media person like you, is a media yeah. person whether you work for PTV or you work for yeah. ATV. And uh, thank you very much for saying that, but Both then at the same time, ladies and gentlemen, we are still asked, what else do you do? Well, <laughs> you should actually stop asking that question. But we do but, do a lot yeah. of things like study and stuff. Yeah, <laughs> so very quickly, I just want to move on to Ms. Hmm. Sabino over uh, here. Can I just sure. add in to Why what not? Uh, Mr. Mushtaq was just saying? Yeah. I just want to say that all the doctors and the media persons and the good language that you speak, madam, are created by teachers that were around. Of course. Yeah. So of course. that's why for generation and generation, there has been this um, teacher that has made people and personalities Absolutely. that have transformed the nation like uh, the gentleman just said. Yeah, Absolutely. which is why, you know, the next question was actually about teachers as well. And, you know, since we've asked a mother whether how is she, uh, you know, kind of learning to use this management learning system, which we call matrix as well. But other than that, how important, you know, since you mentioned that, you know, ICT skills are very important as well. So do you think that Roots Millennium is actually imparting ICT skills on their own okay. towards their teachers as well so that they can probably be in contact with the parents and then giving the right homework for the kid? Okay. Training the trainers. So yeah. Thank you so much for asking that. Let me give you how it works. Yep. Uh, number one is, um, before I move on, for the parents, uh, we've been at uh, it uh, trying to communicate to our parents for a, it's now over years, that please download the app. Mm. Yeah. Don't take it lightly. Uh, please, it is a medium of communication. Yeah. Right. And we've been at it. Uh, myself, uh, sir, and everybody else has been going around mm -hmm. trying to tell them. Now it's become a necessity. Yeah. Um, having said that, um, uh, uh, as this um, uh, uh, vision was given, about uh, five years ago. So the prospect of the entire company was put on training. Mm -hmm. So training is a major, major part Ooh. in our uh, uh, part of the world, at least in my organization. Yep. Right. We have uh, in a big uh, department that looks after the training. So we train everybody that comes on. Yeah. Right. So what happens is the ICT gets involved with every subject. Mm -hmm. it, w it is not a uh, uh, a snapping thing for uh, uh, the Millennium Educations. When I say that, and I say that with a little bit of pride also, because it has been in our classrooms, we've been teaching our teacher, and we have uh, need-based teaching, we have uh, 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 necessary teachings that are required to get people onto the technology. Yeah. We've been telling our teacher how to make her class more uh, tech savvy. Yeah. So yeah. just to it. add, yes. that, uh, 2008, one of the first things that I did, I went to Intel Education in Karachi. I reached out to the president of Intel Corporation, yeah. and I authored Asia's first ICT skills and curriculum. Why? Oh. Because as a young Pakistani growing up, I went to very basic public sector schools, but good schools. Yeah. Yeah. I went to an army public school Same. in Rawalpindi, <laughs> and then after that, I went to Cadet College. Yeah. What were we taught? Computer, M O dash. S E mouse W A N van. What does CPU Achha, stand what for? What does CPU stand for? <laughs> yeah. Input, process, output. output. Ridiculous. Yeah. I am the first Pakistani to author a roots inter joint information communication technology wow. curriculum. At that time, half a million dollar was spent. I invested. Copyrights are with Intel Corporation and myself, and we created that ICT. Wow. It was this project was a case study for India, 
it was a case study for Philippines, South Korea, and Malaysia. I presented those case studies in the region. Wow. And then the president co-authored the welcome note, and that book is only available to my students. Once the government of Punjab, many years ago, they asked me if they, the government wants to share my information communication technology curriculum. And I said, for nation building, yes, I'll share it. So that is the kind of a comparative advantage I've given to the students of the education group, information, communication, technology, as it is a game changer, it is the common denominator Across in all the subjects classrooms. as well. Wow. And yeah. allow me to say, Brilliant. if uh, uh, Mr. Mushtaq has just sort of uh, touched upon it, uh, he not only authored the uh, uh, booklet for the students, yeah. there's a guide for every class teacher. Oh, brilliant. So it was the primary. We have not only said the secondary, face-to-face -face <coughs> teaching is there. Mm. And, so, and it's been going on in our institution and we've been pushing it mm. um, down and we've been saying no, every day is a struggle, but every day. So this perspective where uh, um, uh, we have these smart TVs in our classrooms where if a teacher wants uh, a certain thing to be shown, even in uh, uh, mathematics or uh, 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 in the English language, right. she uses that they tool. They say as the give the child the tool, mm -hmm. yeah. not just teach the child yeah. a tool. Yeah. So the journey which the parents, teachers and students have taken started from the blackboard. It went on to the whiteboard. Then it came up to the smart boards, yeah. and now it is on the web board. So wow. this yeah. is a digital journey. Yeah, and, and I'm very thankful for that as well. But uh, she's has got a question. Yeah, yeah I do actually. Gone. You know, to my be better understanding, because I want to understand how the Matrix app is sort of uh, different than the different than the regular LMS that, let's say, I have in my university or something. Yeah. So, Ms. Osman, moving on to you. Of mm -hmm. course, there might be online classes. There might be video lectures of all the you know updates and schedules, mm -hmm. but. Um, I'll sort of give you a condition mm -hmm. or to respond to. So let's say there's a worksheet for Iman that probably you don't understand how to deal with. Answer yeah. one of the or questions. Fractions, you know, something. Yeah, anything, anything at all. So, uh, but you need to do it in that day as well. There's a deadline, let's yes. say. So immediately through that app, you reach out to the teacher asking the issue and then they respond in time. How does that happen? Okay, what happens is that we have, it depends on what subject it is. Okay. Um, if, uh, like Shazad just said, that if it's a math subject, mm -hmm. uh, the math teacher would be available there. So oh. we have a discussion uh, tab on the side where we click it and uh, we start communicating with the teacher. Oh, perfect. So um, if uh, Iman is not understanding uh, fractions or say multiplications or mm -hmm. say um, any kind of uh, concept which is not clear to her, yeah. the teacher is available there. Okay. And we can ask her and then she would be there um, explaining the process, okay. um, whatever is not understandable by the child. Wow, okay. and that's great. And yes, that makes sense well. individually. Yeah. Individually, if I yeah, well, yeah, that's something I know, but you know, I actually wanted it, uh, uh, you know, I wanted the parent to actually say it to everybody else as well, mm -hmm. because that's the same thing we encountered yesterday as well, and that's how we got to a solution. But very quickly, I need to ask, how many downloads have you had so far? 13,000. 13,000, and what's the total number of students? Uh, about 15,000. So how are okay. you reaching out to all of those who are left out? First of all, our server went down. Okay. Oh, yeah. The entire server hosted with an external organization, Comset. You know, I need to make them accountable. Yeah. <laughs> it went uh, down. We need to yeah. rebuild the entire server. All right. So we are reaching out to everyone on daily basis. But at the same time, we don't want to push it. Okay. Because my philosophy is empathy. Yeah. Again, you did not ask me the critical question. There are a lot of parents up there. There's absolute panic because yeah. you see, you have to understand the cultural and social practices, joint family system, pupo, cha cha, taya, mm. and always say, don't make comparisons of the children within Obviously. the family. Yeah. Now, my message to the Pakistani parents, Go those ahead. who are listening, is now it's very important for them to understand that this is a time for INGs. You need to help them with sleeping in the morning, with reading, with playing, with praying, and with playing with a lot of activities which yeah. you know the sleeping reading discussing talking you know so you need to spend time with them now what Correct. do you need to do make sure the sleep and time not that the, the children are watching the new money heist at <laughs> night with the parents so children need to go in bed in time and they somehow you know you need to have a regimented timetable exactly. then they need to if you want to take them to the garage yeah. show them how you change the oil of the car yeah. they don't know where the wa water goes in for the wiper 
Yeah. They have not been into the kitchen for a whole generation. Mm. We have been working under the social and the community pressures. Yeah. Right. You will be amazed that you talk about urban parents. Yeah. Urban parents these days, I'm saying something very challenging. I know I may get beating for this. Urban parents are not giving their children presents. They're right. giving their children presents. Yeah. Your children do not need your presents, your iPhones, your Dubai tickets. Your, uh, your 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 glorified lifestyles yeah. they need your presence and whereas the children in the middle classes and in the rural uh, community they are spending time but that time is also disfranchised with the institution yeah. so right. my so my message is that please help them regiment with what they are doing yeah. mm. spend quality time age appropriate discussion and validate their ideas. You Absolutely. said the children are giving short answers. The reason they're giving short answers is because you're not talking about a topic and a theme which is mm -hmm. of interest to them. Exactly. Yeah. So build on your question onto the age appropriate topic and a theme. Validation means that you need to listen or you need to see and feel and moderate the act that they want to do and play Pithugol Garam <laughs> and play Home Garden River Sea Ocean yeah. oh. and play Ludo yeah. and play Monopoly and and play Kavaura and oh. Chidi Or play chess as well for that matter but thank you very much for reminding thank me that so I much. missed out on an important question but this is another question which yeah. I think is very important from parents perspective and as soon as we told them or uploaded it on our pages they said that this is something which we need to ask you so everybody is actually making sure that everybody is getting their due relief which is important for them at this point of time, is there any due relief you will be giving to parents in terms of fee bills as well? Well, none that I could <laughs> see. I didn't miss out on yeah, the yeah, important I mean, one. it's a very important subject for the parents. Parents uh. do ask this question: What is our fault if the school is closed? Yeah, yeah. Why should we be paying the tuition fee? Yeah. And also, especially to to our education system, they say, Faisal Saab, with all the jazz that you have, this thing, this thing, they look. I do accept and understand that being an innovative, 20, not just 21st century school, a 24 and a half century school, I'm a prisoner of my own conscience. Quality as a price, it is a sustainable private sector economy. That fee that you pay goes as a remuneration, as a salary. It yeah. goes to the landlord. It goes to the tax collection. So it's a whole economic cycle. All right, so I think we'll have to do another show on that as well. And that's how it is. But ladies and gentlemen, we're very lucky that they have actually taken our time and have joined us to let other pay people know yeah. what they're doing within the digital arena of education. You guys are doing a wonderful job once Thank again so as well. So Please make sure to us. write to us on our Facebook page, which is with the name of? Well, this morning. On Twitter. Well, this morning without a G. On Daily Motion. Uh, well, it's well this morning. <laughs> on YouTube. PTV World, but find us with the name of our show. Well, yeah, this morning. and the fabulous repeat is going to be at 5 past 11 p.m. tonight. Till the next time, one, two, three. Good, Good morning. morning. Take care. Look up. Magla Hills, the heaven of Islamabad, the abode of God, a place where you can explore your soul and meet power of natural elegance of mountains. Spread over